And I'd love to welcome you back to the Independent Investor Channel for another exclusive interview here with CEO Stallion Discoveries, Mr. Drew Zimmerman. He's been kind enough to come on, provide us some insights on what has been an, a, a very busy month. Lots of news forthcoming with the company. Drew, welcome back to the channel here. Uh, welcome. I know the viewing audience is, is thirsty for information, and I thank you coming on, uh, providing that color on what has been a very, very busy month at Stallion. Drew, welcome back to the channel. Absolutely, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to be on with you, Ryan. Uh, always appreciate it. Good stuff, Drew. We have been covering uh, Stallion Discoveries and the work in the Athabasca. Um, we'll kick off this interview, and this is something that I have been absolutely curious about. There's been uh, significant survey work uh, done in the Athabasca on your properties, and I was hoping to get a little bit more color around the status of that survey, if we could. And I know the viewing audience would absolutely uh, appreciate so any information that you have forthcoming uh, on that currently and maybe potentially where we're going latter 2023. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have finished the, the data acquisition phase of that survey. So uh, what that is, is that was a helicopter in the air. Uh, flying over 195,000 acres, so a significant land portion. That's the land that we own 100% of in the Athabasca Basin. So that process is done. They've now processed that data over the last uh, month and a little bit. And, and we're working with Condor Consulting, a key uh, company that's been uh, really good at, at processing and interpreting the geophysical data in the Athabasca Basin for the last several decades. Uh, very highly regarded, happy to be working with them. Um, and they're going to take the next several weeks now to to really take the, that data, give us our conductors across our property, uh, map out where our key target zones are, potentially uh, narrowing down as, as far as, as drill targets, but uh, likely just giving us those target zones. Uh, sure. that we'll look to follow up on. But I mean, the important thing here is is we're following a roadmap to discovering the Athabasca Basin. It's not something that we have to recreate. Uh, companies have been exploring here for 60 years. We're just, we're taking it, we're adding new technology, uh, new knowledge that we have. And and what we're going to be looking for on the back of this uh, geophysics study is is the analogs. How does our project set up to look similar to other projects where they've made discoveries? Uh, where are some differences, but again, where do we find our, our best opportunities and to be able to set ourselves up for the highest priority target. So it's it's going to be a pretty exciting time uh, in, in a month or so when, when that data comes out. Looking forward to those maps uh, as much as anybody. Uh, and we're really going to be looking forward to, to being open with the capital markets. Again, we think the markets and our investors are going to be as excited as we are uh, when we're sharing this data, because if, if they understand uh, what we're doing, um, we're, they're going to see you know the value that we've been creating uh, through this process that we're going through. So again, being very open and transparent with our exploration efforts as we go, we think we'll uh, continue to create value. And, and again, hopefully our investors are excited, as excited as I am to uh, get those maps back. Well, I think in no short order, it's going to be extremely contingent upon those results. And Condor is a who's who in the industry, and we will be um, eagerly anticipating those. For those that are unfamiliar with the Stallion Discoveries opportunity and what you guys are trying to do and you know, neighbor with established uh, players who's who in the industry, and those who are unfamiliar with the Athabasca region, can you just kind of double down a little bit and discuss what the commodity, the hot commodity is that we're going after uh, up there in the Athabasca, which is prolific and world renowned. But for those that don't know, can you add a little color on that, Drew? Absolutely. I mean, we are, are focused on finding big resources. Uh, we set ourselves up in everything that we do to do just that. Uh, we, we followed that checklist again fully in the Athabasca Basin and, and excited to be in the uranium space. It's a space that we got into because we see not only the next month, the next three months, the next two years, three years, but the next decade as being uh, an incredibly great place to be for the uranium sector. Uh, we look at right now, spot price has been moving higher over the last uh, month. Yeah. Some of the equities are, are trying to catch up. Uh, we do have 
some of the bigger players like Cameco moving to recent highs, uh, not coming down into the junior space just yet. But again, with uh, geopolitical issues, with the fact that we, we need to move to nuclear power to get to net zero by 2050, uh, again, a, a zero CO2 emitting baseload power source, something that you know, we just really need, especially as we move into electrifying the economy even more yeah. uh, and, and increasing our demand on electricity. And then the potential uh, ramping up of SMR technology and, and actually getting uh, SMR technology into uh, the power grids and, and the fleet, we think will uh, increase demand for uranium exponentially. Uh, that really isn't in a lot of the demand models as we see right now. But um, already, uh, supply demand in incredibly tight in the uranium space and more demand coming online. And as we know, mining uh, does take some time to to bring some supply online. So again, starting early stage exploration like us, uh, we think that's where it has to start. Those dollars need yeah. to be invested in those exploration efforts to find the commodity. And that's been part of our strategy. We are in the Athabasca Basin because it is bar none the best place in the world to be looking for uranium. Um, Kazakhstan produces half of almost half of the world's uranium right now at a 0.2% average grade. Uh, Cameco is producing out of Cigar Lake at over 17% average grade. So for us, uh, it's the best real estate in the world. And it's why we've gone out and acquired a lot of real estate in that uh, area. We think that's one of the levers that our company has to this uranium market when it when it starts to heat up and investors start to, to see the value that we see in it. Um, but it's also the fact that the economics of, of when you make an exploration discovery, you want the potential to be you know game changing for your company. And that's what we can see with the economics of these high grade, large uranium deposits that are found in the Athabasca Basin. So the return for our shareholders uh, on a discovery can be uh, in incredibly significant. Absolutely. I uh, really appreciate the color around that, uh, Drew. That's fantastic. Um, talk to me a little bit about the joint venture with uh, Atha Energy, if you would. Yeah, again, so just coming back to our strategy of, of really wanting to acquire a lot of real estate in the Athabasca because it's the best real estate for uranium exploration. So we already had uh, 195,000 acres throughout the Athabasca that we own 100% of. Um, but we've just struck a deal to earn into a 70-30 joint venture with Atha Energy. So uh, by giving them 3.3 million stallion shares, so they'll be a, a good shareholder of, of stallion. Um, and then spending $12 million in uh, exploration credit um, over the next five years. So again, $12 million that uh, we will put into the ground in our exploration efforts. Uh, ends up with us having 70% uh, of that joint venture with Atha holding 30%. Uh, so uh, it's it's a great way for us to earn in. We're not paying any cash to Atha. Atha gets uh, exploration done on their their land, and and we have big economics on the upside potential of it. So with that land, we now have uh, almost 750,000 acres. Uh, throughout the Athabasca Basin, it's a it's a stunning land package. We have the single largest <laughs> exploration package in the Western Basin where we're focused, where we think uh, there's the most potential. Um, it's an underexplored area and, and we're really looking forward to getting out there and continuing to do a lot of work to create value for our shareholders. For you guys that um, need a picture of what Drew is talking about, I'd invite you to stalliondiscoveries.com. You will see there in the east and west sides of the Athabasca Basin, an overlay of the massive land package that Drew is talking about, and it is nothing short of impressive, Drew. And um, you guys have um, you guys have accumulated. The, the key now really is to unlock the value um, in this big land grab that you guys have been involved with. And I, I think that's really going to unlock. And if I would go so far as to say to probably be the catalyst to, to start to unlock that value that me and you know is there. Um, unfortunately, I think we talked a little bit before coming live here about you know the the the, the equities markets and the capital markets not not seeing it that way and it's it's really been a tough go in 2023 even with the run up in just a few of the large cap uh, tech names with the high interest rates i think we talked about the potential perception that there's a squeeze on capital um, that may be available to smaller companies out there for stallion discoveries you guys just wrote another uh 
a private placement deal as well. So is liquidity a problem for you guys? And if you want to talk about a little bit that private placement, I think the shareholders would probably benefit from that from that clarity. Drew? Yeah, absolutely. So um, here, here in Canada, we've got several mechanisms for uh, tax incentivized investing. And that's what we launched with this latest 4 million non-brokered uh, private placement was a, a charity flow through mechanism and a traditional flow through mes- mechanism. So again, uh, both tax incentivized uh, programs that allow for, for less dilution um, on the corporate side for us. And again, taxable benefits uh, either for charities or the uh, individual uh, buyers of the traditional flow through. So we did do a uh, regular hard dollar, 4 million non-broker private placement in, in February. So again, still have a couple million dollars in the treasury. We're not uh, starving to, to bring uh, money onto the, or onto the books, but uh, for us, it, it was the tax incentivized structure that uh, made a lot of sense because those dollars need to be spent on Canadian exploration and and that's where we're we're focused. That's where we're putting all of our time, energy, effort, and capital right now. So to raise the the flow through dollars that are less dilutive, uh, and be spending those uh, for our exploration efforts, especially now that we've got a significantly uh, larger land package with the Atha joint venture, uh, being able to spend those dollars just makes uh, a lot of sense. So that's why we've gone out with the uh, recent uh, private placement that we launched uh, last week. So we've got liquidity. We've got one of the biggest, most robust land packages. We're going after one of the most valued commodities on the earth in the most prolific region on the earth. Did I summarize that correctly? In the past, (laughs) in the past one month, the stock is down 35%. In the last five days, the stock's down close to 27 and a half percent. I put, put that out there. I've known you a while. You're a friend of the channel here. And your your explanation, I wanted to give you kind of a, a crack to maybe respond at what I see in the company and the unlocked potential in the five major categories that I just placed as a value proposition over Stallion. What gives? What what? Why the disconnect, Drew? I'll give you an opportunity to maybe summarize a little bit more of the geopolitical pressure or may, maybe just a, a, a doubling down of the tough financial markets. We found ourselves tranched in in 2023 and what potentially might be the catalyst to move us beyond this state and really start to unlock that value, Drew? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, never, never a good thing when the share price is, is under pressure. The capital markets are where we find our, our funding to be able to do uh, the exploration efforts that we're taking on. So always a, a vital uh, part of our business model. And, you know, the selling uh, obviously has been been tough. And I think it is a bit of, you know, selling to get some selling. We've been one of the stronger names uh, yeah. year to date. Uh, So we always get a a bit of a target on our back, I think, with that, especially if there's more fear creeping into the general market and especially the junior marketplace. And and it does seem that, you know, some selling does just bring on a a little bit more. And we are seeing, I think, uh, you know, the volume on the selling side uh, abate a little bit, which is is great to see. Um, So I think some of it is general market. And then, of course, you know, launching a, a financing um, a lot of the time, the market does tend to to pressure you down to some of those price points on the financing, um, That's right. which you know we have to be aware of. But again, I I would say the investors that are taking place in in the financing, they they do have warrant uh, upside as well. So um, there is a little bit more upside on that uh, for them. Um, but yeah, it's it's been it's been a tough market, and again, in in these times, uh, I, I like to remind everybody that we still have capital in the treasury. You know, we're bringing in extra because we've got such a, a robust pipeline of work to do that we think creates an incredible amount of value uh, going forward. And and it is a little bit of you know not ignoring what's happening in the stock market because it's important for us, but really just continuing to put our heads down and go to work and. And as I said earlier, just really trying to be clear with the market uh, about what we're doing, uh, about the results that we see coming in, because I think if if they understand what we're doing uh, and understand where we're going, uh, you know, they're going to see the value that we're creating and the value that, that we see and and see the excitement that, that we have with what we're doing. And and again, I think that will come back around and get reflected in our, our share price again. Um, but again, it takes a little bit of time sometimes. 
It always takes time, and it's a it's a it's an unfair question to be honest with you. In the acute, it is one of the tougher questions to ask of a CEO. You know who I feel like is is indefinitely um, in charge of driving the shareholder value, and uh, uh, the disconnect I see is that I believe that you're doing that, Drew. And so I ask the question somewhat tongue in cheek, and look to define a, a, um, a distinction or a separation between the stock action and what you guys are doing behind the scenes. So I really appreciate that. If we want to shift gears for a second, you can kind of give us an update on the um, the American portfolio both Nevada and Idaho, if you'd be so kind, and the uh, developments for the uh, Horse 7, if you would, Drew. Yeah, absolutely. I, again, been a, a little bit since our, our last interview, so lots uh, yeah. has been going on and a lot, <laughs> lots to dig through. Uh, Amen. We we did announce the 100% uh, ownership of Horse Heaven, so we did our final uh, earn-in on that uh, property, so we do own it outright 100% now. Uh, very excited about the potential of what Horse Heaven has in central Idaho. Uh, again, positioned right next to Perpetua Resources. Uh, Perpetua, we think, is is taking the final strides, uh, moving towards permitting, looking for their, their draft record of decision to build what's going to be one of the largest open pit uh, independent gold mines in the United States. Uh, Six million ounces in the ground, uh, great costs on, on producing, so very economic. And, and, you know, their share price over the last five, six months has, has really started to, to move on that. And again, uh, now that I own that property outright, I've got a, a low CapEx strategy for it where we can largely, you know, do a little bit of structural mapping and additional work. But uh, again, really just sort of sit with it. And, and we're just in the final stages of, of a 19 pad uh, drill plan uh, that once we get that permit, again, that's something that we'll sit on. Uh, just until Perpetua gets their their full go ahead, because we think one, our our property right next door being uh, permitted for drilling and ready to go will be worth more, and two, those drill results when we do decide to start drilling it will be worth a lot more when there's a brand new mine being built uh, right next door. So, again, for our shareholders, good optionality to the gold space, uh, tremendous strides being made right next door, creating value for us without us having to to do a lot of the heavy lifting, which which goes a long way. And it's a, uh, it's a similar uh, narrative in, in central Nevada where we have our Richmond mountain project. Uh, it's right on the border of I-80. Yeah. I-80 has just been a incredible success with the, the drilling that they've done over the last year. Uh, they'll be putting out a, a fresh resource on their uh, Ruby Hill project. That's already got seven and a half million ounces of gold in the ground. I think, you know, we're going to see that number increase and, and increase a fair bit when they put out that new resource, which is exciting. But they've also got a new uh, CRD target, which is uh, high grade zinc, lead and silver. And that moved them to acquire Paycor Minerals earlier this spring for 105 million Canadian. Mm -hmm. Paycor is on their south border. We're right on their eastern border. So we're going to be uh, doing a geophysical survey out there this summer. Um, the same survey that I-80 is going to run on their property. So really looking to see if that mineralization, as much as it moves south, which is why they, they acquired Paycor, if it also moves across their eastern border, which we uh, think it does. There's a big uh, geological intrusion right between our projects that's sort of a center post to that thesis. Um, so again, doing some, some work that doesn't break the bank, um, yeah. you know, but continues to create value for us. And, and again, more value getting created by the fact that I-80 has five active drill rigs going right next door. So again, uh, a lot of work happening in close proximity that uh, we're not paying for. And again, as that value becomes more uh, prolific and as this district uh, gets more and more attention, again, our Richmond Mountain project uh, continuing to gain in value. So for us, uh, near term, very low CapEx on, on both our gold projects, but you know, significant potential and, and optionality uh, that can come into Stallion. Uh, by continuing to to hold both of them and, and do a little bit of work to progress them as the the neighbors really uh, do do a lot more work for us. Yeah, absolutely. I think sometimes maybe the perception is we we do these huge land package grabs and it's hard to imagine what type of progress is, is happening. In other words, do they just acquire this land and does it remain static? I failed to mention the, the diversity amongst your uh, land holding portfolio 
the golden antimony here in the States and then the uranium package up in the Athabasca. So I'll just, I'll throw that in the pile as well. I'm a little frustrated when I watch the stock price and you guys are doing such good things, uh, Drew. So with all that going on, the progress on both the, the Condor um, extrapolation of the data going on right now, and we'll eagerly await those results. And then, you know, the smaller, um, you know, capital preserved package uh, on the drilling uh, here in the United States. How is it that we can expect to 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 roll up stallion discoveries here in 2023, um, and and kind of put a cap on where you see the company back half of the year, Drew? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've got uh, a lot of work to do in in the next six months, nine months. But again, it's going to be an incredibly exciting time for us, uh, starting with the geophysical results that we're going to be getting out of the Athabasca Basin. Um, That will likely coincide with us kicking off the the flying of another airborne survey over the the JV ground that we've acquired. So again, starting our our roadmap uh, sort of all over again with that land. As we continue to drive value on on the land we've already started on, and uh, if that needs uh, the advanced geophysical uh, surveys on the ground, we'll, we'll do that uh, later this summer, with the intent of being able to permit and and mobilize drill crews as things start to freeze over. So uh, that will likely yeah. be into the end of this year. Uh, again, in the northern Saskatchewan area, it's uh, a lot of lakes, can be a lot of bog and and that sort of thing. So yeah, the the very cold temperatures, while you think it would be not ideal for, for working in, uh, they actually provide uh, good mobility and, and access to some pretty remote areas where we have uh, these projects. Uh, so that's the, the roadmap for the Athabasca Basin. And, and again, like I said, we'll be launching a, a geophysics survey down in Nevada um, and, and getting those results back early fall. So uh, a big information push on, on that Richmond Mountain project as well as looking to get uh, our drill permit for Idaho. Not that, again, we're going to act on it, uh, but it will be a very uh, key card to have up our sleeve uh, for the Horse Heaven Project as Perpetua continues to do the work that they're doing next door. So uh, a lot going on and a lot of work to be done. But uh, again, we're we're in a good place with uh, this new uh, flow through financing that we have that will be able to allow us to, to put our head down and and get through the work in this next six to nine months. And uh, again, the, the treasury that we still have a, a couple of million in the hard dollars uh, to be able to do the work in, in the U.S. and, and all of our corporate uh, expenditures as well. So in a good place to really move through a, a couple of good catalysts. And, and again, in the Athabasca Basin, I like to stress that you know we're taking large underexplored land in the best jurisdiction. We're you know, sharing our borders with Next Gen, Cameco, Arano, uh, the recent uh, ultra high grade discovery of F3 uranium. Uh, we're right next to that project, the PLN project. So, in the right neighborhood, we have every chance at uh, you know several high priority targets. And, and as we prove those analogs out, even just from this geophysical survey, we've taken what was you know a large underexplored package and made it that much more valuable already. So. Uh, really excited, even just uh, in the near-term catalyst. But yeah, especially you know when we get uh, really into it over the next uh, four to nine months as well. Uh, we were a little bit overdue on this update, Drew, and I do want to thank you. If our viewing audience has uh, been intrigued uh, by the excitement that Drew has conveyed, I would invite you because you're not going to remember everything. We we unpacked a lot during this interview. I'd invite you to stalliondiscoveries.com. Um, I frequent their website. I am up on every single news release that they do release, and I'd invite you to do the same because these guys have really done a good job of separating themselves. Um, they are really making a name for themselves in some of the most prolific jurisdictions on the earth, and it's going to be fun over the next six to nine months to track their progress. On behalf of the channel, I want to thank you, Drew. I'll give you the last word and turn it over to you and look forward to future updates from you. Drew? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Ryan. I appreciate coming on and and giving you the updates. And just to reiterate what you said, I mean, on our website, you can sign up for our news releases coming right to your mailbox so you don't have to worry about missing anything. Uh, Our our Twitter is is getting more active as well. uh, So you can see news releases and, and we'll retweet other articles that, again, really just trying to make sure the market knows what we're doing um, so that they can see the value in what we're doing, see the excitement that we have, and again, hopefully uh, 
have some of that excitement for themselves and, and follow along and, and hopefully be a part of the story and, and the success that we're looking to have uh, in the months ahead. Fantastic. We see the value there. Keep doing what you're doing. You will not be able to be ignored for very long. Drew, thank you so much for your time. Uh, keep up the good work and uh, we'll talk soon.